Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Stock Swish Show Live Market Review. I'm actually going to review the QQQs in this buy in one full on explanation video here. Uh, it's Tuesday, October 14th, and we're about halfway into October. Let's, let's actually go back to the beginning of October. Let's just go back. The month started out bearish. Okay, the month actually started out in October with a bearish gap. That was back here on the 1st. And if you just look at the last two weeks of trading, the market has only had one green day in here in the last two weeks. This is like a medium-sized bar back here in the 3rd. Uh, this is a bullish bar here too, but this is really the only bar with any extension in it, which is, was on the 8th. So for the first two weeks of October, the market has shown signs of weakness here. And I'm not going to lie to you that uh, my read on this market was that we'd hold stronger than we have. What does that mean? That means I thought we'd hold back in here. Let's pretend this didn't happen. On the day that the market did this, I felt a very high level of conviction that the market would hold this level. Okay, This is a level of support. It was at 96 and I thought it would hold because it looked like it was going to hold and the market's strong. The one number I had had for a secondary target, it was on this day, but we didn't get to it, was 95. That was in here. We went past that. We actually went past that here on the 10th, which was last week, the Friday. And then after that, we gapped down again on Monday. I didn't look at the market at all yesterday. I took the day off. It was Columbus Day, and I didn't want to look at any charts, and I think it's good to clear your head. Got up this morning, read the market, and my read on the market today was really neutral. That we could have a body in it of a size of green or red, that we wouldn't really have any significant body in the market today, that I didn't think we'd drop anymore today, and I didn't think we'd rally enough today. But we did gap up today. It wasn't anything to play in too long, and you couldn't short the market today the way this looks in here. I know this is challenging for some people to understand, but the fact is the market's still in an uptrend. And the reason that I know this is because I understand how to read gaps. Lots of stuff gaps all the time. Lots of stocks gap, and the market gaps almost every day, actually. And if you don't know how to read what is bearish or what is bullish, it can be challenging to read something like this market here. Why? Because the market made a double top back here and has made a series of lower highs and lower lows and has come in to a deep area here of support. And on the SPY, it's broken the 200 per moving average. I'll talk about that in a minute. But the fact is the overall look of the market here is still bullish. We are not in a downtrend. We're not even in a downtrend here for the short term. We are still holding the uptrend for this market. And what does that tell me? That tells me that the market is higher. So because I understand how to read the overall look of a longer term trend and gaps, I know that the market's higher. Now, did I think that we would pull all the way down into here? No. But remember, there are multiple areas of support and resistance in a chart. One of the nice things about the fact that I day trade gaps is that I don't have to worry necessarily about buying the support of shorting resistance on a daily chart because of the fact that I understand how to read gaps and the strategy therefore is gaps. If you are looking to day trade stocks and you day trade stocks by buying support or shorting resistance, if that's your strategy, which it really isn't one actually, then I, you, know, you don't have a high level of profitability or consistency because there's too many levels of support and resistance in stocks and the market. Okay, Just like I talked about this level of support here, it was broken, then 95 was broken, but we're still holding a level of support. Do you know when to buy something? Do you know when to buy this? Again, this is where, where people struggle. I buy bullish gaps or short bearish gaps that rate over 20 points per my 26 point rating system. Because of the fact that I understand how to read gaps, it has helped me define support and resistance in the correct manner. That helps me in reference to taking my trades, but not in reference to deciding whether or not something's a long or a short, because this market really still is not a short. And although this market has having some sell off in here, it is not institutional sell off. Traders are shorting this market. They've been desperately wanting to short it now for since really since the halfway through the year. I don't, I don't know why. But traders have been trying to short this market and finally are in it short. And there is some selling that's going on in here. Why? Because people panic when they see something like this break in here. This is a level of support. And it broke it in here. People panic and they start to sell out of the long positions. 
but not institutions. Institutions tend not to, for the most part, panic, okay? So people that are up money, regular traders that are up profits, don't want to uh, give back profits if they're long something. So they will sell their profits in the longs. And then you have traders that want to come in and short this too to get a move. If I get up on the day and I don't have a good gap and I don't do anything, I'm not trying to do something that doesn't make any sense, which would be what? Shorting something that really isn't weak or buying something that really isn't strong just to kind of cherry pick to get a move on the day. I'd rather wait till I get a clean setup that helps you be consistent with your method and also your profitability. So the market's higher. My call here for the market is that we're still going to make a new high before the end of the year. My call here for the market is still that we're going to hold. At this point now, we're probably going to do it in a gap up, and that's the way it's really going to set up here to turn around back to make a new high. I don't know when that gap's going to happen, and I won't know until I see it, but I'll see it in the morning when the market gaps. That doesn't mean that every gap up can be bought. It doesn't mean that any gap up can be bought. It doesn't mean the gap up today could be bought. It couldn't, or even tomorrow, but I will know when I see a bullish gap to buy in the market when it sets up in the morning. And I could even rate the market to determine that because my system can be used for ETFs to rate the gap. But the one thing I know and have 100% conviction in is that the market's still higher, unless otherwise noted. I'll know when the market needs to break. I reviewed it in the trading room this morning, and I said the area that the market would have to uh, be at in order to change the trend, and it's not this. If that happens, I'll see it, I'll call it, I'll do a video on the day, but the people in the live trading room with me get the best benefit of seeing what my market call is each and every day and for the longer term trend to see if anything's changing here in the short term time period. For now, you got to lay off this market, let it correct itself back up in the manner that it needs to be intraday into an uptrend, but no one should be showing this market longer term because it's not going to crash like everyone keeps saying. If it will, I will see it when it happens. Is this happening here? No. Remember what I was saying, institutions don't really panic. They are in stuff for the longer term. Institutions do not sell out of their positions and things that they're in for the longer term because of one red bar or even three red bars or even a week of red bars. So don't forget it. You want to be with the institutional buying or selling in order to make money. And that's one of the reasons that what I do makes so much sense because I'm reading the institutional position in a stock when I'm deciding to buy it or short it. And the same thing applies to the market. I love to short. I love, love, love to short. If the market rolls over and turns completely and falls off a planet and crashes, I will be in the best position of anyone out there to short because I'm extremely good at shorting. I can read weakness very well. I'm very good at setting targets. I know what dream targets are. And if the market falls and crashes, all the shorts that I like are going to go to dream targets and I'm going to hold them too. And I'm going to have just, just, it's just, I'm just going to be in the best position I've ever been in. The fact that I've created this system that I short in in my gap rating system in a bullish market and have made money to the downside during a bullish market is a testament to my own ability to be able to read things correctly and work hard at seeing what something's really doing. But if the market turns, and if the market turns around, and if the market ends up being bearish, I'll be in a great position. Why? Because a lot of J traders, a lot of traders out there don't like to short. Even ones that think that they know how to short don't and will get chopped up in a bearish market. People tend to be scared about shorting, don't understand it. People prefer to go long, even day traders. And a lot of people have no idea how to take short positions, entries actually in something, or where to put the stop or do, how to do any of it or the targets. I'm really good at all of that. I'm an expert in shorting. I'm the best that there is. And so the reality is that if the market turns and falls and crashes, I'm not going to complain. I'll see it when it does. It's just not happening here, okay? But I will be in a great position. So will everyone that's taken my class and is in the live trading room with me because I'm just going to nail it, bang it out, and it'll end up being a huge, 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 massive just time period where there'll be just jimongous amounts of money to be made. I don't think that's going to happen this year, and I don't know if it happens next year, but I doubt it if the market does what I think it's going to do in the next four to six months, which is still rally and make a new high. But it is going to happen sometime in my uh, trading career and when it does, I'm in a really good, strong position to take advantage of something that a lot of people don't know how to do well, which is short. And I also know how to read weakness well, which a lot of people don't. And many people are uncomfortable as traders shorting. They just don't get it. And uh, so it's all good. <laughs> it's all good, really. It's really all good. I don't know why a lot of people don't like to short over going long. Uh, I love to short. I think there's a lot of money can be made to the downside. When panic and fear sets in, things can collapse. What all this is going on in here, 
is that people getting concerned that are long that feel the need to sell out of stuff that are in profits and some people trying to short this market. But this isn't what I would call weakness in here to play into to change this chart. But like I said, if the market turns, I'm going to be all over it. I'm going to be all over it and there's no holding back. The one thing is when I when I say something, what I think something's going to do, I have 100% conviction in what I say. If I don't know what something's going to do, I say I don't know what it's going to do. But I never say something that I don't believe. Okay, So if I believe this market was lower, I would say it. I believe the market's higher, so I'm saying it. And uh, part of this, too, is intuition and instinct about being able to read things well, besides the fact that I know how to read gaps. I mean, I'm just doing this for so long here now that I just know. Uh, I just know. But I don't know when we turn around. I think it really needs to happen in a bullish gap. I don't even know if today is the end of the area in here. But let's look quickly at the SPY. So the one thing that I've noted, and I don't think the SPY would break this one area in here. I took a state of loads. And this is something to note. is that the SPY has been traveling, moving forward ahead of the QQQs for about the last two years. So it, it appears that the SPY broke harder in here than the QQQs. But all along for the last two years, this market has really rallied heavily since the beginning of 2012, January 2012, which started out with a bullish gap, by the way. Uh, the SPY is moving ahead of the QQQs. SPYs are out at all-time highs. The Qs are not. So the fact that the SPY came in harder here than the Qs, and the Qs are holding better and stronger and in a position that I expected the SPY to hold is no surprise because these markets are trying to come together now into the same place. And maybe that's what needs to happen before the market lifts higher again. Okay, So the SPY looks more bearish than the QQQs here. But overall, over the last two years, it's been stronger moving ahead of the Qs. So now they're just like coming together here now. All right. But again, I don't know if this is the end of the drop down in here for the time being. There's another area that this could come into before it, it actually gaps up and starts to go higher. And I don't know if that's going to happen this week or not. I won't know until I get up every morning and read the gap. And I just read the gap today and I just didn't think we'd go anywhere with it. SPY is showing more strength than I thought today. But we're not up over 190 yet. So. What I had said, I think it was September, was that I thought in the next four to six months, the market would go to some crazy number bullish. If the market corrects this little pull in here, flips around, does a bullish gap, rallies and continues and makes a new high, it is going to play out that way that I thought it would. Again, I saw it back in September. It's still okay to play out that way. It just hasn't gotten there yet. But what's going to happen is it's going to push all the people that have shorted this on through. The people that shorted this market will have to get out and cover their profits. And the buying will come in to lift the market in the first place, which would come in in a bullish gap, follow through on the day. Shorts will scramble to cover. And then people that sold out with profits may get back and jump back in the market. That probably isn't going to happen immediately. It would happen later. And that's what will lift the market to some crazy number and then throw it on over the high into some other number. So it'll be interesting to see here how we end up trading into the end of October because I have a feeling that everything that's happened here the, since the 1st of October, which has had a bearish look to it, even though it's really not, okay, even though it's not changing this overall trend, is going to end up completely 100% reversing. I just don't know when that happens. If I see something different, I'll say it. As of now, no. Did I expect the SPY to come in through this number? No. Am I surprised though? No. Why? Because people that are unsure of themselves that are long will sell because they want to take out their profits. That's what's happening. People that are looking for something to do then that are traders feel like they're missing something if they don't short. They're starting to short here late if they didn't short up in here picking a top. They will short late and then that will push the market down. But none of this is what I would consider institutional selling. 
Somebody made a comment on my trends course video. That was a while ago. About tops and bottoms, because I talk about that in the trends course. It is an improper way to trade to pick a top or a bottom. It is completely an improper trade way to trade. It is impossible to make money consistently over the course of your life if you trade like that. So for anything that ends up being a top, like let's just say the market would end up doing something that I'd say we are now in a downtrend bearish, which we're not right now. But let's just say that it would. Does that if this would end up being then the top of the market for the next two years, would that mean then it's right to short tops? The answer is no. You only take something when it tells you it's good to do it. And there's nothing and no reason to short this market up here. Whether it would end up being the top or not, or anything that would end up being the bottom before it would lift, there's never any reason, strategic reason, to go against this. Okay. It just makes no sense. It's not the right way to trade. So sure, do some, some things end up looking like they make bottoms, and do some things end up looking like they make tops, and double tops or double bottoms? Yes. But is there ever a reason to buy them or short them? The answer is no. There's no strategic reason to do that. You're just blindly guessing that something's doing something. I'm lucky that I know how to trade gaps. I'm lucky that I get so much information from a gap. It's because I know what to look for, which is in the 26 points. But if I see it in the gap, I will know it in that moment when I see it. So I don't have to worry about guessing. I will know it in the moment that the market of the stock gaps, which is what I trade every day in the stocks that I trade. In the moment that I see that gap, that I rate that gap, and it rates per the 26-point rating system, I will know then that I can take the trade and I will have what I call 100% conviction in doing so. Until then, you just wait or lay off. Okay. There's no need to really guess in trading. You can have all the right information at your fingertips if you know what to look for to take a quality trade. I'm really lucky that I figured out what I know in order to do that. Because I can tell you right now that if the way this market plays out plays out the way that I anticipate, there are so many people that are going to lose money in this market. And there's so many people that are going to wish that they hadn't sold their longs and they're going to get in late. But the market still should rally anyways. But people will wish they wouldn't have sold all their longs. And shorts will get run over like a Mack truck. And it could all happen in a gap. That's how strong gaps are. And that's the power of money, actually. It's a beautiful thing, i got to tell you. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, the market kept gap up 10 points tomorrow. And every short could be scrambling to cover. And everyone that's short this market could be down and down a lot. That's how powerful gaps are. And that's how powerful real money is in the market. And that's why it's so important to know how to read it. So I was talking to someone the other day, or I was talking in the room, I don't remember, about billions and trillions and gazillions. And I was looking up the definition of gazillions. Think of institutions in the market as having gazillions because it's just a lot of money that they have and you can't really ever think of anything that could be inconceivable that could happen because of it. <laughs> That's the best way that I could describe it. <laughs> That's the best way that I could possibly describe it. So this is Melissa with the StockSwoosh.com. Running a lot of specials here from now until the end of the week on the Trends class, the Entries class, and the Golden Gap class as well. If you're interested, email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. The next Golden Gap class is the 25th and 26th. If you're interested, email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com if you want to sign up. I'm running the specials in lots of things till the end of this week, which is October 17th. And uh, it's going to be a nice, solid week here of some good trades. Looking forward to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday after getting back from the long holiday and uh, look, looking to have a nice, solid weekend here, regardless of what the market does, just doing my gas. Have a great day, everybody.